this is Tamara at mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Huga Cocoon Cardigan, which is a free pattern on mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both the right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as all the supplies you need, and the written pattern itself. For this pattern, you need six to eight balls of red heart huga, depending on which size you make. For the misses, you will need six balls. For the plus size, you will need eight. You will also need a USN hook. This one is by Furls, as well as your standard crocheting supplies, scissors, a tapestry needle, and I find stitch markers really helpful for this one too. These are by Clover. So you can see here some pictures of the finished huga cocoon cardigan. It's got a very simple construction, so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. Let's go ahead and get started. The body of the Huga Cocoon cardigan is a simple rectangle that's folded, seamed, and then sleeves are added on, as well as a nice edging for the body. Let's take a closer look at the actual stitches that we use to make this rectangle. Now, the Huga Cocoon cardigan doesn't have a stitch multiple. Like I said, it's pretty much just double crochets, so that you don't need to worry about getting a specific number of stitches if you decide to alter the pattern a little bit. However, if you're following the written pattern, the first row begins with a chain of 97 for the misses size or 106 for the plus size. Since I'm just demonstrating the stitches today, I'm just going to make a much smaller swatch. So chain however many you need for your size, and then we're going to skip the three chains closest to the hook, one, two, three, and those will count as our first double crochet. That means we are going to make our first double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So I will yarn over and work into that fourth chain. One, two, three, four. I like to go into the back hump of the chain. I think it gives a nicer finished project, but it's totally up to you. This row, row one, is just double crochet across. We're just going to go ahead and double crochet in each one of these chains until we get to the very end of the row. So I'll see you at the end of row one. All right, so at the end of row one, you should have 95 double crochets for the misses size or 104 for the plus size. Again, these are just simple double crochets. Then we're ready to turn and work back the other way for row two. For row two and the rest of the pattern, it'll be exactly the same. Row two just gets repeated for the rest of the pattern. For misses, you'll go to 40 rows, and for plus size, you'll go to 44 rows. And they're all gonna be like this. We're gonna begin with a chain three, turning, of course, to go back the other way. I like to go ahead and add that stitch marker to the top of my chain three, right now, so I know I can find it when I come back the other direction. And then I'm going to continue on across, and each stitch is gonna be the same until the very last one, which is that marked one there. In each of these stitches across, I'm going to work a front loop only double crochet. Front loop only means, normally when we make a stitch, we go under both of those loops, right? Both those top loops of the V right there. You can see right there. Front loop only means I'm only going to go under the loop that is closest to me. The front loop is always the one that's closest to you. It doesn't matter when you flip over the flip over your project again, it's then it's the one that's closest to you. So right now, this is the loop that's closest to me. That means my hook's coming up right in the middle of that V. I know it's a little harder to see in this yarn, but I wanted to demo in the yarn that it's made with so you can see how it comes together here. So then I'll yarn over and just make my double crochet just as normal, just like that. Then I'll do the same thing, like I say, on across until just one stitch is left. By working in the front loop only, we actually get a better drape on our fabric. It's a little trick to make it just a little bit drapier and softer and hang just a little bit better. It also creates a nifty little line, uh, sort of a pinstripe effect on the opposite side of the fabric here, which I'll show you in just a moment when I've got all my front loop double crochets made. Now, if you had a hard time seeing that, I do have a separate tutorial for front loop only linked out at the link in the description. So when I flip over my work here, you can see, hopefully, there we are, that we've got that little pinstripe effect. These are those back loops that we didn't work into, and that creates that look that you'll see across the back of the cardigan. So flipping back over this way, we have that very, oops, I got my fabric swatch a little twisted there. There we go. I can always tell if it's facing the right way on the loop, on the hook, if you pull on the working end there, and you can see that it moves on the front side of the hook. So a little tip there to help you if you get switched around like I did there. All right, so like I said, we've got one stitch left of row two and rows, like I say, rows two through 40 or 44, all the same. That 
very last stitch is just a little different and it's an extended double crochet. And we do that because when we've been working across in the front loop only, it ends up creating just a little bit taller fabric, but it's not quite as tall as a treble crochet. So we have to find a middle ground and that's where the extended double crochet comes in. I'm going to yarn over with my yarn, just as I normally would for a double crochet, go into the top of that stitch again, just as I normally would. This time I'm going to go under both loops, however. Little fiddly when working into the top of a chain three, but there we go. We want to anchor this one down on our side just a little bit better. So I'm going to pull up my loop again, just like a standard double crochet at this point. And then here's where the little extra extended bit comes in. I'm going to yarn over and pull through just the first loop on the hook, like so. And then I'm going to finish my double crochet as normal. Yarn over, pull through two, there we go yarn over and pull through two. And that's an extended double crochet. And you can see it becomes then the same height as those front loop double crochets, but is a little better anchored in. And that's nice when we're seaming together our work at the end. Again, that was row two and rows two through 40 or 44 are all going to be just like this row. Now I know it was a little harder to see in this yarn. So let's go ahead and pull up a smoother yarn and do that swatch again. So it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so to demonstrate it with a smoother yarn, I'm going to use Red Heart Soft Essentials. And in, in fact, if you didn't want the fuzzy look of the Huga, this would be a good substitute. They're about the same ounces, the same uh, yardage, and the same weight. So let me go ahead and pull the label off this one and pull up a few yards, and we can demo those stitches again here. I'm just going to again start with a slip knot and a few chains. Let's see. Two, three, four, five is probably enough for our purposes here, right? There we go. Uh, actually, I'll need a couple more because I need to skip those three, don't I? There we go. All right, so now yarn over and double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. Again, just working into that back hump. It's my favorite place to work into that starting chain. So I'll work my way across here for a quick little row one. There's a couple more to make here. Oops, dropped it right off the hook. Let me try that one again. There we go, just two more. Pull up a little bit more yarn here. And one more for row one here. There we go. All right, and now we can demo row two. I'm going to start again with a chain three and turn. And then in that next stitch is where we're going to work our front loop only double crochets. So I just go right under just that first loop there and make a regular double crochet, just like so. And I will do that in each stitch across again until I get to that very last stitch, which in this case is a chain three. Now, if you prefer beginning in row two, you can start using chainless starting double crochets instead of chain threes, but that is up to you. Either way, I like to put a stitch marker in it normally. There we go. But for this little swatch, I'm just getting through it here to demo the stitches. So you can see here, we've got our front loop only double crochets all the way across into the last stitch. And then let's make that extended double crochet one more time. We'll yarn over, go into that last stitch under both loops this time. There we go. Pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through just the first one, and then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. And that's it. That's like I say, that's rows two through 40 or 44, depending on what size you're making. And of course you can adjust it a little bit as needed because like I say, there's no stitch multiple for this pattern. Now it's time for assembly. Okay, so after you've made your 40 or 44 rows, you should have a nice big rectangle, a lot bigger than this of course, but this is just for demonstration. So. After you've got your rectangle made, go ahead and break the yarn, leave enough to weave in, of course, and then lay it out flat. You wanna make sure the rows are going across, and then you're going to fold it by taking the top edge and just folding it right on top so it meets the bottom edge. That's about it. Then we're ready to assemble. What we're going to do is we're going to seam 10 inches along each side of the rectangle, starting at the edge here at the bottom, starting at the open edge, okay? So obviously on our bigger rectangle, we'd have a lot more inches to work with. Here's just gonna be about an inch or so on each side. But to do that, we're just going to take some more of the Huga yarn. You're going to need to cut the yarn for this one and put it on your tapestry needle or yarn needle. There we go. 
I set that aside. At this point, it can be a good idea to use a few stitch markers to hold the sides together and to give a little indication visually to yourself exactly where you want to stop sewing for those 10 inches. So I'm just going to add a few here. So you can see how that holds it together really nicely. After you've seamed that 10 inches together, depending on which sizes you make, there should be eight and a half to 10 inches left up here, and that will become our armhole. So with my yarn on my yarn needle, what I'm going to do is mattress stitch seam along the sides here. So to do the mattress stitch, stitch seaming, again, I do have a separate tutorial for this that I've linked at the link in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and do it with the Huga yarn. So if you need to see this with a clearer yarn with something without some fuzz, then you can go to that tutorial to see that. Let me get this first one out of the way here. But basically all you do for the mattress stitch seaming is come from behind on one side, oops, leave some end there so you don't pull all through the way through, and then find the same spot on the opposite side and come from behind there. There we are, Oop. got a little cotton yarn there. There we go, and pull that through. And then we're just going to go to the other side, come from behind again, pull that one through, and then again on the opposite side, just working back and forth. And when you give that a good tug, you can see it really pulls the sides together and you can't see any of the stitching at all. Of course, with this yarn, it's even harder to see. So if you're not comfortable with the mattress stitch, you could use the whip stitch or some other seaming method, whichever you prefer, whatever you think is going to give you an end result that you like. So I will just add a few more here up to about or a little, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and stop here so we've got a little bit more room to demo the sleeves. So again, if you were making the full size sweater, you would want to work 10 inches from this front opening, from where we brought the ends together here, away from the fold, working towards the fold. Make sure to leave this space open though because this is going to become our armholes. So after you've seamed up 10 inches on both sides, then we'll be ready to add our body opening and our sleeves. Okay, so here I've got on my little sample, we're going to call it 10 inches of each side seamed. After you've got that done, you're all done seaming, so that's great. The rest is just crocheting. So at this point, you should have basically a little cocoon sweater. If you open it like this, you can see how it actually is worn. This becomes the body opening here, that first row and last row, and the parts we didn't seam there become the little sleeves. So up next, we'll add a nice edging to our body opening and then our sleeves. Okay, to add our body opening or edging, I like to start from the beginning of the foundation chain. Um, it's just a little bit stiffer and creates a little more, more structure than the final row. So if you can't tell by reading your crochet, which is which, you can actually give them a little tug and see, ah, see how stretchy that is? That was the last row I made, a little tight. That was my foundation chain. So I'm going to start from the right side of the sweater which I think is the even numbered row, so that you've got two rows here after the pinstripe at the end. And I'm going to start in approximately the middle, and you don't have to find the exact middle stitch for this, um, but it just puts the seam for the edging right behind your neck that way, so it's hidden a little bit more. So I'm going to just find any, any stitch right here, right about in the middle, and insert my hook, go ahead and go under both loops here, and then we're going to yarn over with our yarn again and pull up a loop, like so. And then, this first row of the body opening is super simple because we are working into the foundation chain and that last row we made, we're just making a uh, half double crochet in each stitch around. And we don't even have to work into any edgings or anything since these are actual stitches here. And because I made my first row into the, um, the back hump, I've got two loops now to work into for this round. So for round one of the body edging, edging, just take your time and work a half double crochet in each stitch around, all the way around. When you get to the sewn seam there, you can just kind of skip over it, or if you eyeball it and think maybe you need to stick an extra stitch there, you can. Again, stitch count doesn't matter for this part either. It's just a matter of working all the way around. Now I do list a stitch count, since we are just working into that first and last row, you should be real close, but like I said, if you need to fudge it or add an extra stitch at that seam, um, that's totally up to you. I found that it wasn't necessary, but with your gauge, you might want to add one. So after you have finished round one of the body edging, then we can begin round two together. 
Just work all the way around and do a slip stitch join right in that very first half double crochet and I'll see you when we get there. Okay, so after you've finished round one of the body opening edging and slip stitched that half that first half double crochet you made, then we're ready for round two. And rounds two through four will all be the same. We're going to chain one and half double crochet in the third loop. So that's a little tricky and in this yarn it's going to be a little bit harder to see. So I do have a separate tutorial for this linked at the link in the description. But basically you yarn over and then you go into the horizontal bar that is at the back of each half double crochet. So, oops, <laughs> hit my yarn bowl there. So basically when you ha make a half double crochet here, you can see there's that bar from the yarn over right there, that horizontal bar. That is the bar we're going into, but we're doing it on the back of the stitch. So it's a little harder to see on the first one. If I flip over here, the later ones, you can see it's that line right there. Again, if you, this is too difficult for you to see in this yarn, you can go to the link in the description and watch the tutorial specifically for this stitch. But other than going into that third loop, the loop behind, it's exactly the same as a normal half double crochet. So you yarn over, there we go, go into that loop, pull up a loop, and pull through all three. And what this does is it pushes that top V of the previous row forward and creates just a really great, almost knit look line around your fabric. So I'll take just a couple more here and you can see how those look right here. There we go, oops, pull that forward a little bit. There we go, and you can see those are those V's I was talking about, that top V gets pushed, those top loops, front loop and back gets pushed forward. So we keep doing this, like I say, for a couple more rows all the way through round four and that will push all of those forward. Then when it's time for round five, we've worked all the way around and joined and done it again and again and again. That last round is for round five, we're just going to work a single crochet in the third loop. So you see how this one sticks up a little bit so we can see the body of the stitch. By working a single crochet in the third loop, here I'll do a couple here, you can see, there we go. The stitches are significantly shorter. Pull that loop out of the way, there we go. The stitches are shorter and it maintains that look again, so you don't have that gap there. So we want half double crochet in the third loop for rounds two through four, and then for round five, half uh, single crochet in the third loop. Then you join and finish off, and you'll have your body opening finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the yarn here and then demonstrate the sleeves. Now for the sleeves, obviously we're going to make two, but only one at a time. And we're going to work into that unseamed section on each side of our sweater. We're going to join to any stitch of the arm opening, chain one, and then work two single crochets in the side of each row around. So depending on which size you've made, that will be either 36 stitches or 44 stitches all around. Again, it doesn't matter for the exact stitch count, but for this one, you do want a multiple of two. So if you find that with your stitches, you need to add an extra stitch somewhere, just make sure you add it two extra stitches or four or six or whatever you need. But really 36 or 44 should work for your arm opening. So I'm going to go ahead and join uh, just uh, any of the stitches here. Oops, yarn over with my yarn. And again, I'm doing this from the right side of the sweater, so from the outside. And I chain one and then just work my way around, just as if I was working into the edging of a blanket or any other thing. Just make sure to look closely at your rows so you can get two stitches in the side of each row. When you get down to where the seam is, you just jump on over to the other side and keep on working around. So I will see you after I have finished round one of my first tiny little sleeve. Okay, so I have finished round one of my sleeve and I've just worked single crochets all the way around that sleeve opening. Again, if you're making the misses size, you should have 36. If you're making the plus, you should have 44. Then for the round two, we're just going to chain one and double crochet two together around. So I'm gonna kind of make that a tall chain one. It's not going to count as a stitch, just the same as if we did a single crochet or a half double crochet, but then I'm going to do my double crochet twos all the way around. And that's why we needed to have an even number. I'll yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over again, go to the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two. Then with three loops left on the hook, I yarn over and pull through all three. And I'm just gonna continue doing that in each pair of stitches all the way around for row two. 
Now, I would recommend after you finish this row that you go ahead and try on your sleeve. Um, obviously, just the one. Uh, so do this when you make your first one and see how it fits. If it's a little too tight, you can go back and omit some of those decreases. Basically, though, at the end of this row, you do, again, want to have an even number of stitches because we're going to be doing just a little bit of ribbing in the next few rows. So, oops, messed up my stitch there. That wasn't a double crochet two together. But basically, we're just going to double crochet two together all the way around, hopefully have an even number of stitches here at the end, and then we will begin our next rows. So I'm going to continue doing that, and I will see you at the end of round two. Okay, so when you've finished round two of the sleeve, it's time to begin round three. And rounds three through 14 of the sleeve are exactly the same. Although you can add a row or take a row out if you find that the cuff is a little too long or short for your arm. Oops, everybody's got their own uh, arm length, so you can adjust this pretty easily for you. So to begin round three, I'm just going to chain one. And then I'm going to work a front post double crochet around the first stitch and a half double crochet in the stitch after that. And then that's our repeat around. So since we're working into round two at this point, remember those are double crochet two together. So let me get them nice and centered for you here. So we're going to yarn over and then we want to make sure to go around the entire stitch. So kind of both legs of that double crochet two together to make this front post double crochet. If you're not familiar with front post double crochets, I do have a separate tutorial on how to make that stitch on the uh, Moogly YouTube channel. Let me move my yarn bowl out of the way a little bit here. All right, then in the next stitch, like I said, we half double crochet. So we just go under the both loops of that next stitch and make a half double crochet. Oops, there we go. Then we yarn over again, kind of, this is a tiny little sleeve on our little sample here, so I'm kind of working my way around pretty quickly. But again, I just want to make sure I go around both legs there when I make that front post double crochet. So in rounds three through 14, you should have the same number of stitches that you ended up with in round two. So that's a good way to help keep track too if you have adjusted the number for yourself, or just depending on what size you're making. So I'm almost all the way around my tiny, teeny, tiny little sleeve here, but that is the basic repeat. And then of course you would join to that first stitch made, the first front post double crochet, and then chain one and do the same repeat around until you get a nice long sleeve. So let's take a look at the finished sleeve here in just a moment. Okay, here you can see one of the finished sleeves on the finished sweater. You can see here is my row of double crochet two together, and then the front post and half double crochet repeats on the way all the way through. It's a pretty short sleeve, more of a glorified cuff. The rest of the sleeve is sort of built into the sweater. But I just kind of wanted to show as much as I could here on camera on my little table how the sweater has come together. You can see here was my side seam. There are those rows of body edging that we worked all the way around the front opening there. And then of course, this was the part that was left open. If I can get my hand in here, there we go. And we've got our little fun sleeve. So that is the basics of how to make the Huga Cocoon cardigan. I hope you'll give it a try. I hope you'll give Red Heart Huga a try. It is an absolutely gorgeous yarn and I've had so much fun using it to make this sweater. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, to do please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, let us know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly channel. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.